Good afternoon and good evening. Today I'm interviewing Courtney, who is an American living in Korea and who is a, mem is a BTS Army person. And so I'm very interested in her experiences living in Korea and being a BTS fan. And tell me just briefly here, how long have you been in Korea now? Two years and change. Two years, and wow. A couple weeks. Tell me first how you first became aware of BTS and uh, and what your experiences YouTube have spiral. been. Say it again. YouTube spiral. YouTube uh, viral. A spiral, spiral. I was directed, I was looking through the comments under a video and someone said if I was interested in seeing this uh, music video with like a sad storyline, I should check out BTS's I Need You. Because that's, that music video comes with a story. And, and, that's, and it's called I Need You? Yeah, with I, you being just the letter U. Okay, I need and the letter U, okay. Hmm. So that's, that's, sort of, that's, that's what I need to look up, but go ahead. Yeah, it's the it's the first video of their storyline basically. It's the one where it really starts. And so someone's like, if you want to watch another music video with a, a storyline or a sad storyline, you should look up BTS I Need You. And this must have been back in must have been August of two thousand and fifteen. Mm -hmm. And I ended up clicking through onto the music video, and I really liked the music, and I liked the storyline that they were sort of building in the music video. And I ended up going, clicking through all the rest of their music videos that they'd released up until then. Mm -hmm. And then clicking on their, like, variety shows that they personally upload themselves. Like, they're, they're, they film with their staff to upload. Mm -hmm. And... Then I just sort of fell, fell into a very long spiral of just clicking on YouTube videos for a good solid couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And that must then, then I was pretty heavily invested by the time they, they came out with an app in Korea called V App. V App. V Live. It's, it's V Live. We call it it's the V App or V Live app. And it sort of lets Korean celebrities, Korean groups, either do live videos to their fans so they can talk to their fans and see comments or upload previously filmed like variety shows or travel shows. And they started doing that, must have been late August, early September. Of 2015? 2015. Okay. And BTS was really, really into using it a lot because they're really invested in connecting to their fans, which sort of intrigued me as somebody who came from first the Western world of music and then the Japanese world of music, where fan interaction is still very limited to like occasional social network posts and like sometimes a, a, a cute video or something posted up by, by like management or staff or them on their social network. So finding this whole like, community of music where the artists are invested in connecting with their fans in, in a way was very intriguing to me. And I just sort of spiraled down because VAP came out and they used it a lot. They upload a lot of variety shows, just videos where they're hanging out with each other. Playing. What, what, what is VF? V app, V app, sorry, V live, the app, the app. V -app. v app okay yeah v a p p okay and it's only um it's only for korean uh celebrities to use okay but anybody can watch it from anywhere it's I a see. free application to download right. i see okay but it's only used as an upload by korean celebrities i see not oh. just k-pop idols but anybody in the korean celebrity world okay terrific um, so it's a really easy way, I think, for idols and celebrities to connect directly to people who are invested in following them. And 
BTS made really heavy use of it because they didn't go on a lot of Korean variety shows, which was sort of uncommon for groups because they tended to focus more on their music production and writing and and their music work rather than like promotion in the way that standard K-pop idols promoted. Mm-hmm. So all their social promotion was done with their own staff on their own music channels or their own YouTube channels. And um, so. do you know of, a, is there a, an app like that uh, that is used in the Western world? Are you familiar with any of those? The closest that I know would be Instagram Live. Instagram Live. Mm-hmm. Where 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 celebrities can go on an Instagram live and they can start a live feed from their phone with their fans, and that's become really common for Western celebrities to do in the past three four years or so. That's become a really common thing for celebrities to do in the West, and it's become somewhat common in Korea as well. But it's not as common as doing the app for most uh, big groups. I see. Okay, or terrific. just uploading YouTube videos. And what about Discord? Discord, I'm, I'm familiar with it in a peripheral sense. Oh. Um, I have a really bad track habit of keeping up with like big group chats like that. Um, but I know a lot of like K-pop fans, armies, they have their own like special Discord for one thing they want to talk about, especially. Um, army groups that, that do specific projects will open up a Discord channel to keep it all in one place so they can sort of talk to Okay. But I'm really bad at those. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, but, I'm lucky I keep up with all my group jets. Okay. Yeah, I, kn- I know uh, the problem because I'm already getting into it because because BTS armies have... have yeah. uh, gotten interested in me <laughs> which we're, I appreciate we're, we're, we're sort of I think in a sense we're fascinated by the fact that somebody who who does something like psychology and studies something like that is now so heavily invested in something that doesn't seem like it would initially connect with that kind of field of study yeah, but I'm I'm getting very impressed and and very 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 connected to this because uh, one of my other BTS armies who mm-hmm. agreed to an interview a few weeks ago. Her name is uh, mm-hmm. Mirtas Alavera, in mm-hmm. and she's in uh, Brazil or in Brazil. Yesterday, she brought to my attention. I I don't know if you. No, but of course you do know that Map of the Soul Persona is yes. based on a Jungian book, right? Yeah, I've read. We I'm part of the BTS book club on Twitter. We read it as a group and we talked about it together. Okay, so it's called what? What's the? It's BTS book club. Um. Yeah, I'll send you the link to their Twitter. Yeah, um, please. On, through DMs, so let you know. We pick a book every month. Sometimes it's one of the books on RM's reading list. Sometimes it's a book that's off of it just for fun. And we read it over the course of a month, and then we sit and discuss it for a few hours on a Sunday, or my Sunday, their late Saturday, depending on where you are at. Right. Well, so, so that's what connected me in, because uh, a Jungian analyst I know of in New York City has two <laughs> Korean adopted children. And mm. they have been getting very involved with with uh, BTS, and suddenly she realized that that BTS was yeah. doing this album about mm. Mary Stein's book, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's how it started for me. And then I started to see see it in various other places. Uh, yeah. So I realized, oh my God, th- this group. <laughs> is going to spread information about Dr. Jung everywhere. Uh, so I understood that from the very beginning, and it's just a phenomenal thing because uh, I'm very interested in uh, getting psychology more uh, mm. attention in the world. Okay, yeah. for example, we 
had this shooting in Colorado last week where one kid was I killed. Heard a bit about it. Right. And and that kid had been the the shooter had been mm -hmm. making statements about what he was going to do with, to other children. Uh, that should have been an immediate uh, red flag for the staff yeah. that something was wrong and that kid mm -hmm. needed attention by a mental health professional right then. Mm -hmm. Okay, just yeah. the fact yeah. that that was said and everybody in high school and junior, you know, everybody in education and all teachers and so on need to be educated about this yeah. fact because that kind of ideation if it's there it can happen yeah and so i've been very anxious to figure out how we could get psychology in the schools but of course i'm looking at it at the old fuddy-duddy way and that's impossible because if you propose to teach psychology in the schools the fundamentalists will come down upon you and say oh no you can't do that blah 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 and so it would be a big political brouhaha but what bts is doing is boom they're going around the schools and mm. they're getting so many young people around the world to look at this book and look at what dr young was talking about and start paying attention to mental health issues and they, mm. and they've been doing that all along okay so bts armies told me very quickly that that's what they've been doing all along and i'm i'm only running breathlessly to catch up because that's what they've been doing but i think it's extremely powerful and extremely important what i wanted to mention that happened yesterday was that Meritus brought to my attention. Uh, first of all, I want to mention this book, okay, the Red Book by C.G. Young. Are you familiar with this book? I've seen it. I've not actually read it. Okay. Well, it's not the place to start with Jungian psychology because basically it, um, it covers Dr. Young's visioning period, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, one of the and so what Meritus pointed out to me is that there are many references to the Red Book in BTS. So I'm going to show you one of them that Meritus pointed out to me, and this is it. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. This from the from, uh, yeah, I remember what that's from. Okay, so that's from uh, the Love Yourself. And so we have an anima figure here, uh, which is the yeah. perfect woman in a man's mind, right? And what, mm -hmm. what is she carrying? She's carrying a red book. Okay. Mm. Can you see my cursor when I'm moving it around? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so she's carrying this red book. Now, mm. what, what's interesting is that um, in another song, uh, and this one is Epiphany, um, yeah. there's also a reference to a red book, okay, and can you see that? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and this music video was yeah. done in, it begins in black and white, but suddenly mm. it starts to turn to color very slowly, and what emerges immediately is the red book, okay? Mm. All right, so what is, and, and so then there's um there's uh knowledge let me stop this share for a minute and start the next one uh there is uh, let's see okay so i'm going to share this it's it's actually a video on um on youtube and this is this is a um, this is a talk being given by Becca Tarnas. Now Becca Tarnas is, um, the, mm. I believe, the daughter of Richard Tarnas, who's a who's a famous psychologist and very well known in the Jungian world. I don't know if he's actually a Jungian psychologist, but I think he might be. Uh, but anyway, Becca was invited to talk at uh, the opening of um, 
the Red Book, when the, fir when the Red Book was first published in 2009, 48 years after, um, after the death of Dr. Jung, and so it was hidden for 48 years, uh, mm. Becca was invited to come to t talk about it at the Library of Congress. Okay, so mm. it was it was a big deal when that happened, and you could look up, um, you know, the Red Book Library of Congress on YouTube, and you can hear that there's a two-day seminar about the Red Book there. But what Becca pointed out is that that Dr. Jung and J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote, you know, um, who wrote uh, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, um, were doing the same thing, similar thing, and that Tolkien himself had a red book, okay? And so that's what this particular video is about, where she's talking about the red book of Dr. Jung and the Red Book of J.R.R. Tolkien. Okay, and so what, what the Red book, book is, in very simple terms, is a scrapbook that Dr. Jung kept of the emergence of his visions. Okay, so it's, it's a very interesting idea. I'm about to have an interview with uh, Paul Vanderclay who is a, who is a uh, reformed pastor in Sacramento. And Paul, on one of his videos, said, um, where is Tolkien in Middle Earth? Okay, so he's, what he's thinking, what, what Paul is thinking is that Tolkien is God in Middle Earth. Okay, but in psychology, it's the opposite. Okay, it's not where is Tolkien in Middle Earth, it's where is Middle Earth in Tolkien. Mm, it's the writer's paradox. Well, it's, it's uh, I, maybe it's the writer's paradox, but uh, anyway, it's, it's the imaginal world. Okay, yeah. and, and so it's Tolkien uh, it's not where is Tolkien in Middle Earth, it's where is Middle Earth in Tolkien, okay? And mm -hmm. it's in the psyche, in the, in the um, unconscious, that's where it is. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and so that really turns the perspective of a theologian on its ear because, because now we realize, as Dr. Jung realized and wrote about for 30 years, that mm. God is really in us here. God isn't out there, okay, which is what we were all sold in Christianity, okay, for the last 2,000 years, okay. So Christian theolo theologians envisioned and sold to all people in Western world who became Christians, a God that's out there, a devil that's down there, okay? And um, what, uh, and the truth is that God is here, God is in the heart. And, and so, uh, that's a very, that's a short, very short explanation of something that's hugely complicated and long. Uh, Dr. Jung wrote about it for practically his entire life, but um, but anyway, the point the point is that there are these connections that people haven't seen, the BTS people haven't noticed, for example. Okay, and so now I'm seeing as I'm talking to BTS armies, I'm seeing these connections also thanks to BTS armies. So thanks to Mertis yesterday, she pointed out these references to the Red Book, which were there before they did Map of the Soul Persona. Okay, and so what I'm interested in now is finding BTS armies who see the see other references to that. Okay, and so uh, for example. Um, for example, again, I'll go back to this one. All right, so 
here's a a psychic fact okay this is yeah. this young woman is is quite beautiful and she's all put together and she's basically from the Jungian point of view she's an anima yeah. figure so she's the perfect yeah. woman for a guy to look at right and yeah there's that's sort of what this whole video is in a sense about it's each of the members minus one have an opposite female figure that they interact with right right and that red book when she drops it he picks it up which is why it shows up in the epiphany video as it's a continuation of the storyline right and and so you're are you saying that the red book is is the is the common element in in the storyline um it's it's a there's a question in the fandom especially those who do a lot of theory work or who try to connect all the videos and find all the connections between um what what part of the story is being displayed in the next video because this music video this that particular video that you showed was put up back in 2017 right um epiphany didn't come out until late 2018 as a lead up to idol mm -hmm. um but that but that book came back and there was the connection because in that music video it there, there's a whole storyline a whole timeline involving the characters and the the male character you see in that one um Sultan's character He's the, the the center of the story, and that I'm girl. Sorry, who, who is the center of the story? Sokjin, Jin, Jin. Oh, Jin, J I N. Mm. Yes, he's the story's central character. He's the main figure of the, of the story. Mm -hmm. The there's a bunch of theories about who, if the boys are representations of different parts of themselves, if they're actually real people in this world, up until they introduced more of the story, and then the girls came in, and it was thought that the girls are the opposites of the boys. They portray, now that we're learning more about Young, the, the anima of the boys, except for one of the boys doesn't have a female opposite. There's only six girls, and there's seven boys. Um, but Jin, the girl who portrays Jin's anima, she ends up being hit by a car and dying yes. at the end of the video. This, this girl that we were just, that. yeah, the girl that mm -hmm. we were just looking at, yes, uh huh. Yeah, and he keeps that red book. I think he was going to go give it back to her. Yeah. And he spends a lot of time, he's, he's in a time loop, he's stuck in a time loop in this story. Mm -hmm. So, he keeps that red book, and there's always an attempt, I think, at him to give it back to her, and he never manages it so far. Right. So, um, it, it's sort of an interesting perspective as her as an anima, him with her red book, objectively his red book, um, in that mindset. What does that, like, does he, is this part of himself that he hasn't found yet? Is it parts that he's kept from himself or that he hasn't really seen or examined properly? That he well, I think, I think it's actually a brilliant way to talk about this because things do happen. Yeah. People in your life do die sometimes, and they also uh, cover this kind of in spring day. And, hmm. yeah. and, and the fact that once if somebody dies you have to move on okay that mm -hmm. person that person is not going anywhere but yeah. but the anima okay mm -hmm. will reconnect with another woman at some point mm -hmm. right okay i mean that hasn't happened yet i gather mm -hmm. in the story mm -hmm. well we don't have any more of the storyline yet right okay. last bit of the storyline was fake love right so the anima figure uh, is in you, and um, let me just see if I can bring up my anima figure because I have one as well, and uh, and it applies to me. But every man has the image of a perfect woman uh, in his mind, and I'm going to 
tell you, I'll show you exactly what mine is. Okay, and uh, you may have seen this before, but um, okay. So there's my anima figure, and this is mm. my mother. Okay, and this yeah. is this is my mother when she was 18 years old. Okay, I was actually mm. born one year after this photograph was taken. So she's an imprint on my psyche that mm. uh, is my anima figure. So nowadays, whenever I see a woman that meets this fundamental structure of having uh, mm. brown hair and long mm. brown hair, shoulder length brown hair, and mm. sort of a dark eyes look of, of a brown, mm. brown eyed woman, my psyche tells me, and it still happens today, my psyche says, that's the woman for you. Both of my wives, I had one before, but I divorced after 17 years, both of my wives met that anima figure exactly. Mm -hmm. And it still happens, but now I know it's, it's this sort of automatic psychological function that's happening in my, mm -hmm. in my psyche. And so when I see a woman who meets that, I don't mm -hmm. go after her anymore, okay? <laughs> because, because I know that that's my anima figure and and i already have a wife right so and and we've been together for nearly 35 years so even though that anima figure says to me she's perfect for you i have to take myself out of that concept yeah. and recognize that that's just that's another woman and yeah. she isn't what you're projecting on on her okay yeah. projection is a Jungian mm. idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. So very interesting. So uh, have you seen other examples of the Red Book showing up in videos? I'm trying to think back. I've watched enough of the music videos to know for sure. Um, not, not, I'd have to look at it again. Um, I have to look at the only place that I can think where something similar might come up would be one of the teasers for fake love. Fake love teaser, okay. Mm, I'm All not right. sure if it's, but, but I know a lot of symbolic objects show up in that particular teaser. Okay. Um, because that's sort of the introduction to what the idea of magic shop is. Okay, and magic shop is the name of the... No, magic shop is the name of one of the songs and also the name of a book by Dr. Duarte who wrote it. It's a, it's a kind of mental... It's a book that talks about like his discovery, his, like, his life and growth and also how he sort of used this technique of mental, like, imagining projection, mental projection, to help himself through harder times in his life. Right. And look for a better future and imagine him of himself there mentally so he could strive for it in the real world. Right. Okay, well, that's something for me to look for, and I will certainly do that. Now, the book is titled Into the Magic Shop. In, into the magic shop, and that is that okay. in, um, is that in the BTS uh, shop? Um, I think it was at one point in time, or it was recommended, but it was before they started putting out books for sale in their shop. It was way back in early twenty seventeen or mid twenty seventeen or right. something. Yeah, that shot was like, there is this book. Look at this book. Yeah, pay attention to this um, book. That that was right mm -hmm. after the scene with the anima figure. Yeah, and yeah she dropped it as she walked across the train Right, tracks. right. There's another book called Jung's Red Book for Our Time, Searching for mm -hmm. Soul Under Postmodern Conditions. And yeah. 
if you go to the home home page of my channel you'll find a playlist that's emphasized there right under the most recent videos and yeah. on that playlist I've put uh, a number of readings of various mm. essays in this um, but I want to find one one thing that I uh, okay all right so here's um, I don't know if you're going to be able to read this on your cell phone but I will, we'll see. I'll give it a go um, See, let me get this out of my way. Okay, so share. All right. Can can you are you able to read any of these words? Yeah. Okay. So what what's particularly important in this, although uh, the page thirty six is important, but. Uh, at the bottom of page 36, you see all my stars there. And yes. it says, Jung re recommended creating a personal red book. I should advise you to put it all down as beautifully as you can in some beautifully bound book. It will seem as if you were making the visions banal, but then you need to do that. Then you are freed from the power of them. If you do that with these eyes, for instance, you will cease, they will cease to draw you. You should never try to make the visions come again. Think of it in your imagination and try to paint it. Then, when these things are in some precious book, you can go to that book and turn over the pages, and for you, it will be your church, your cathedral, the silent places of your spirit where you will find renewal. If anyone tells you that it is morbid or neurotic and you listen to them, then you will lose your soul. For in that book is your soul. Your cathedral, mm. one's own church, is an ecclesia spiritualis. Uh, so an ecclesi ecclesial spirituality. This is the pressing issue today, according to Jung. We are in a period of terminal turbulent transition in an interim of history. However, just how postmodern radical plurality and, uh, wait a minute, Incarnatio. and incarnatio continua, the continuing incarnation of God he's talking mm -hmm. about, are entangled with each other remains a mystery. Perhaps this logical contradiction is the sign of a deeper truth. Even if it took centuries, as Jung suspected, before the new God image would constitute itself. The new collective myth already is delineated and the individual consequently called upon to actively contribute to the foundation of a new religion in which the form of an invisible church, in the form of an invisible church. And as this is described in a dream and during an ensuing talk with Max Zeller, uh, with Jung himself. So Zeller's dream was a temple of vast um, dimensions. I have my camera in my way here. A temple of vast dimensions was in the process of being built. As far as I could see ahead, behind, right and left, there were incredible numbers of people building, a, uh, building on gigantic pillars. I too was building on a pillar. The whole building process was in its very first beginnings, but the foundation was already there. The rest of the building was starting to go up, and I and many others were working on it. So Jung said, responded, yes, you know, that is the temple we all build on. We don't know the people because, believe me, they build in India and China and in Russia and all over the world. That is the new religion. You know how long it will take until it is built? I said, how should I know? Do you know? He said, I know. I, I asked how long it would take. He said, about 600 years. Where do you know this from? I asked. He said, from dreams, from other people's dreams, and from my own. This new religion will come together as far as we can see. That 
is sort of the significance of the Red Book, but, but this entire essay, which is truly, truly profound, which is called Searching for Soul Under Postmodern Conditions, The Way of What is to Come, you can hear the entire essay uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay, it's in two parts, and so there's there are two. What I'm going to do is share the home page of the YouTube channel. Okay, so right. sh sharing that and so all yeah. the most recent uploads are here and then mm -hmm. uh, Jung's Red Book for Our Time, Searching for Soul Under Postmodern Conditions and here are the two videos, Jung, uh, The Way of What Is to Come, Part 1 and Part mm -hmm. 2 and yeah. what he says is our age is seeking a new spring of life I found one and drank of it, and the water tasted good, which is a famous quote of Dr. Young's. So I would urge you to go listen to those two sections because they really talk about what's happening to us in the current age. They will be very, very helpful to you in terms of orienting yourself and orient, orienting BTS in the story, <laughs> the overall story of humanity, right? And, the uh, overall story of humanity, the never-ending tapestry of life. Right. So, anyway, okay, so that's what that's about. But that's why, you know, I'm incredibly excited, thanks to mm -hmm. Meritus for pointing this Red Book connection out. Uh, because mm. this is just so powerful, and, the, and this book, Ian's Red Book for Our Time, Searching for Soul Under Postmodern Conditions, also by Murray Stein and mm. Thomas, Thomas Arst, who wrote this first essay in it, um, is in three volumes. This is volume one, mm. there's a volume two, and there's about to be a volume three. Uh, Thomas Arst wrote to me and said that it's about to be published, but I looked mm -hmm. on Amazon the other day and it's not yet on Amazon. So, it, but it will be very, very soon is what I expect. Mm -hmm. But anybody that's interested in that can get volumes one and two <laughs> from, mm -hmm. from Amazon now. And yeah. it's just very, very powerful stuff. Um, and, and it will really orient you in terms of why the Red Book keeps popping up in, uh, in BTS's work. Meritus told me that uh, there is also a video called The Notes. In that video, the, the diary appears there too, but it's not, it's black, I guess it's black and white. It's not shown as red in that particular video. Possibly, yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so it might I'm, show up black and white. Mm. It would depend on yeah. which part of the notes it showed up. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I'm I'm very excited about that, and I'm looking for more BTS mm. armies to co contact yeah. me and point point out some more yeah. of these symbolic I mean, connections between BTS's work and Dr. Mm. Young's work because it's just so important and, it, and it's a way to seed this information out into the yeah. world, which, you know, if yeah. we tried to do it through normal educational systems, it'll take a night, it will take 600 years, as Dr. Young is yeah. talking about. But psychology, I did psychology in high school, but I had a bit of an interesting, interesting school area. I was in a mix between a liberal conservative in between two military bases. Uh huh. Uh, my my high school had AP Psych as an offering. Had they had Psych as an offering? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, psych. they do they do teach psychology in the military, and actually, uh, yeah. the Myers Briggs Type Indicator, wh yeah. which is a Jungian measure, um, is taught in the in all senior schools in the military, or at least all the ones that I ever went to. I, I went to four senior schools, including the Naval War College and the, um, the National War College and yeah, the Command and Staff College of the United States, of the Marine Corps. And uh, you see my <laughs> Marine Corps <laughs> uh, symbol here. Um, 
the, uh, the they all taught the Myers Briggs, but um, you know, more importantly, um, most people. I, I think the most important thing that we could talk about is this Colorado mm. shooting and the fact that mm. when somebody talks about anything like that, they have to be taken to a mental health professional immediately. Mm. Okay, because uh, it means that there's ideation like that in their psyche, and if it's if it's in there and it's happening in their psyche and they're they're already putting it out in the form of talking about it that means it's yeah. going to happen okay and a famous example in dr young's life was uh, one of his friends saw him across the street and shouted over to him hey i had a dream i dreamed i fell off a mountain and this guy was a mountain climber and Dr. Jung said, uh, well, you better not go mountain climbing then. And, and three months later, he fell off a mountain. And so the issue is that, that a dream often is a compensation. In other words, it's a warning. And so mm -hmm. this guy in his physical life was a mountain climber, and he yeah. apparently was trying to... Uh, do some very dangerous things and mm. so in his dream the compensation was um, warning him by by yeah. showing showing him falling off the mountain but he kept yeah. going he didn't think his dream was consequential so he ignored it and three months later he died in that way exactly as his dream predicted mm. and, so the other thing I wanted to mention is one way to connect with your unconscious is by doing creative things. I do my creativity these days by doing these videos and making my YouTube channel, but um, you can find out what your psyche wants you to do by simply going to... Um, you can go to an art store and in the art store see what items appeal to you. If nothing does, then you might want to go to uh, a tool sh supply store and see if any tools appeal to you because maybe your psyche wants to build furniture or something. And, mm. Or you can go to a kitchen supply store and mm. you might be called to... Um, you know, do something with the culinary arts, um, mm. you know, or you could be attracted to dance, or you could, uh, you could go to a nursery and be attracted to some kind of plants, for example. Mm. And when you feel that attraction, that's your psyche telling you it wants to communicate with you through that means. Mm. And if you start doing it, and start keeping track of it in, or in mm. the equivalent of a red book, which is a scrapbook, right? That's what mm. Dr. Jung is talking about in that passage. Mm. Because then you are communicating with the, the self, which is the greater personality. It's the most important part of your personality and it, and it's instinctual okay so in other words that part of your psyche is based on the evolution of the human species since we were single-celled organisms okay so mm. all of us have evolved through successfully reproducing creatures from single-celled organisms to today Okay, both you and me are the result of that. Okay, that we're the result of all those millions of creatures in our paternity, in our parental level um, that successfully reproduce. That has kept us alive throughout all this time. Okay, it's an instincts that developed, that warned us about predators, that warned us about snakes, that warned us about whatever. And so it knows okay? <laughs> and it uses the imp generally it, knows yeah. 
Well, okay, but then then you have to you have to have uh, an ego. Okay, that's the other side of your psyche. The ego mm. is is your conscious mind, and you have to develop an ego that's strong enough to decide what yourself presents yeah. which is good and what is bad okay yeah. and so that that ego is developed by disappointment okay it's because the the cycle and it's called the job archetype the cycle is contest defeat lamentation and rebirth and we all have to mm -hmm. go through that cycle many times in our lifetime and so it doesn't if if you don't have a defeat, then keep going. You're on the right track, right? <laughs> but if you have a defeat of some sort, a disappointment of some sort, then it's appropriate to lament about that and to and to consider what that means. Mm -hmm. But then your psyche will present something new for you to work on, whatever it is. Yeah. And um, I know that the BTS group has had many disappointments and they've overcome them and that's exactly what I'm talking about that's the that's the cycle every time they got disappointed they kept going and they got stronger okay their ego got stronger so that they could handle the slings and arrows of life so the object is to build up a strong enough ego so that you can decide what you know what the idea is whether they're coming up and they're good or they're bad obviously yeah. uh, the guy having that vision and talking to other kids in the Colorado high school that's a bad yeah. idea and you need a strong enough ego to fight back against that I just think it's fantastic what BTS is doing because and they've been doing it for a long time so somebody over there who's started this process is a very 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 smart person okay really. they're the person who runs their company Bang Xia yeah. was a graduate in aesthetics from Seoul National University right. Right. so he did a lot of philosophy and psychology study right and so uh, what is being presented now is just so huge it's it's just beyond belief and uh, the more we can connect this up to what's going on in everybody's psyche it's everybody in the world psyche yes. the, the better we can make those connections the stronger it will be uh, have you seen a concert have you physically been at a yeah. concert I've been to nine of them nine of them <laughs> terrific and and so tell me about the feelings that you've had uh, in connection with connecting with people in um, BTS and so on um, concerts because I've always gone to concerts solo um, oh. mostly because uh, when I lived in Japan none of my friends around me a lot of them were older mm -hmm. were like super into it they're like eh, whatever um, they, they they enjoyed the fact that I liked it, but they weren't they weren't a super big fan of, of whatever themselves. Um, but I used I met um, one of my really really good friends at my first concert back in 2015. Um, she lives in um, the UAE right now, and I got to go. I went and visited her a couple years ago. She came to uh, Korea late last uh, last summer. I got to go up. And when she's in town, mm -hmm. um, and her family is really sweet. They're all really nice. I got to meet her and her sister, her whole extended family. When I went to go visit her in, in uh, Dubai, and concerts, I found concerts. It doesn't matter where you sit at a BTS concert. Right. It's a, it's a joy just to be there because everybody's involved in the concert it's it's not just cheers it's the fan chants are there for a reason and they're there to involve the audience with the group without overpowering the music yes and so it gives you a sense of, of not just being a spectator at a concert but being a participant at a concert 
Yeah. You, you aren't just there to watch the people on stage, you're there to be involved in a community as well. Whether you know the people around you or not, it doesn't really matter. You're all there as part of the same community. Yep. And the army bombs, the um, light sticks that we all have, that at first, um, my first one wasn't Bluetooth connected, it was just the light. And the second one we had wasn't Bluetooth connected either. It was just sort of an upgrade of the previous one. I think it could change color. No, it couldn't change color. So it was just slightly upgraded, less flimsy. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is all is is Bluetooth controlled from your phone. Like you connect it to your phone, you say where you're sitting in the audience, it connects it to the big um the big mainframe that they have in the back that the concert designer uses, the lighting designer uses. And so for each song, your army bomb will change colors wow. depending on what part of the song it is. And so the whole audience will be a wave of blue or rainbow or orange or making circles or hearts or whatever. It's just all controlled. And so you vocally are part of the performance and something that you possess is also part of the performance. So you're an integral part of that concert. If, if you weren't there, that concert wouldn't be the same mm -hmm. in any sense of the word. Because your position in that crowd now has, has meaning from what color your army bomb turns. Mm -hmm. The wave that it shows. So it's, it's concerts are very community oriented. Even if there's 50,000 people. I went, I went to the really big one they had at the at the um, big stadium they have in South Korea. I went there last year to, when they kicked off their Love Yourself tour. Um, and there were a solid 45, 50,000 people in that crowd. It was still a very community kind of experience. The girl who sat next to me and I, we sat and freaked out even though we didn't know each other. Um, everybody... You, you get to be involved in something, which I think is, is very fascinating. No way. Like, I've been to, I went to a J-Rock concert a long time ago when I was into uh, Japanese rock music. Um, and it's, they're still very similar in a way to Korean Western music, uh, um, Western music, as in like there's headbanging and stuff, but there's not anything that you do as a community that involves you in the performance. You're still cheering as a spectator, mm -hmm. which is fun. It's fun in its own position to be a cheering spectator at a concert. Um, Western concerts I've been to are quite a bit of fun, but there's a kind of visceral like feeling to be somewhere where you are. A participant of something as big as that. Wow, that's very powerful to know about. That's very, very interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> I, I can see why how how they're developing such a strong relationship with their fan base. It's it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. It's quite a lot of fun. I've I've. They they changed the system this year, so I didn't try. I didn't get tickets to the upcoming shows they're doing in Korea. So I'm sort of sad. Mm -hmm. They changed it from a how fast can you click to a lottery system. To a what system? A, a lottery system. Oh, they've had lottery. problems with people. They've had problems with um, people like like machine clicking tickets, where they try to buy like 50 tickets at a time and then resell them at a higher price. Uh -huh. So rather than doing that, they're doing a lottery system where each person, each account can only put in for one lottery ticket per day. So you can't mass buy tickets like that anymore. You can only be given a ticket if you are lucky. Uh, I see. So this is this, this is to avoid scalpers. Yes, it's, it's an attempt to avoid scalpers. Right. Time. Yeah, because I, I so heard that at the... I heard at the Chicago concert, which is tonight, they had tickets selling for twenty two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, they had um the the account the the um online plate the online ticket sellers actually just re retook back a lot of those tickets um, within the past week and are reselling them at proper prices where oh, they I have see. been. Uh huh. Terrific. A week and a half or so. 
So a lot, all the stops in the states, at least, took back all the a lot of the scalper tickets and are reselling them at the proper prices. Instead. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, so, so yeah, very very interesting. <laughs> well, this is very useful information, Courtney. I, I very yeah. much appreciate your your comment. Yeah, my smartphone. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you very much. I do want to invite other BTS armies yeah. to contact me, especially if you want to talk about symbolism in the various yeah. videos. That's uh, very. Oh, I mean, I can let my um, I can let the book group chat know yes. as well. All right, terrific. Thank you so much, Courtney. This has yes. been a terrific connection, and I appreciate it. Yes. And uh, we'll talk it was, again. It was nice talking to you. Yeah. Nice, nice talking to you. Take care now. Yes. Yeah. Bye bye.